Welcome friends and friends of friends. Uh, today is mail day and I got quite a few new toys, uh, including all four of these Game Boys. Um, this one is actually going to a co-worker though, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But all four of these Game Boys have the exact same issue. Um, have you ever had a Game Boy where, you know, you, you, you turn it on and the power light flickers or something, or sometimes it just doesn't come on when you turn it on. Uh, take for example this one. Turn, I'll go figure it's working fine now. I swear, just earlier it wasn't. Oh, there it goes. It's on now, but there's nobody home. Yeah. So, all four of these Game Boys have the same problem. This one is the most extreme. I'm not gonna be fixing this one in this video. Uh, because I think this one needs a little bit more help beyond that and uh, yeah that's just gonna make the video too long uh, I will be focusing on this one however I'll put these two off to the side uh, this one is my new favorite console here this is a edition from Japan called uh, Mana Blue oh you can't see some crap with that light sorry I just changed my lighting around I'm still figuring stuff out. Uh, anyway, this is a special edition Japan exclusive called Mana Blue. Uh, I am really excited about this color. Uh, if you compare it to the pearl blue, it's a little bit darker. And if you compare it to like the cobalt blue, it's of course a little bit lighter there. Um, in fact, it's most similar to this color here. And I actually don't know if this is a, uh, an aftermarket only color or if this is an actual original color but this is like a pearl green sort of thing uh, anyway I'm that's for another time uh, I'm, I'm just really happy with this color but this one has the same problem as the other one see I turned it on it went red and it turned off this battery should have plenty of charge in it so how we fix that is we got to open this up and get into the motherboard of the system and we gotta clean up the power switch itself. Now, unfortunately, I don't know if I'll be able to do that with this one. The, uh, the screw hole is packed right full of dirt or something. I'm gonna try and just jam my screwdriver in there. Oh, there we go. It's working. Okay. So this thing needs some cleanup. I'll get to that later. Anyway. Ooh, and this battery is has seen better days. I don't know how well you can see. It's kind of bloated. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway one Phillips or I guess JIS screw on the battery cover there and then there are six tri-point screws around the periphery four in one of uh, one in each of the four corners and then two shorter ones one in the battery compartment and then the other in the uh, game cartridge compartment well, let me turn on the soldering iron We'll need a soldering iron to do this. Now, some people have recommended just spraying contact cleaner in there or uh, rubbing alcohol or something. Um, and, you know, those will work, but those are temporary fixes at best. You really have to get in there and remove all the carbon buildup that's causing this issue. Uh, if you just spray contact cleaner or rubbing alcohol in there, yeah, I mean, you'll, you'll get your Game Boy working, but in a few weeks you're going to start having the issue again and it's not going to be pretty. Um, well, it's not going to make it worse at the very least. Anyway, six screws out. This bottom just comes off here. Um, sometimes these shoulder button pins come out and then these things will fall off and these springs will uh, go crazy on you. You want to be careful that doesn't happen. Uh, with the cover off, you can remove the uh, power switch the slider here. And this is as much as we need to do. Uh, I would recommend taking the motherboard out of the cover. You know what? Let's do that now. 
just because you're uh, bringing a soldering iron near it, you know, you don't want to accidentally slip and ruin your, in this case, one of a kind shell. Because I don't even think you can get this in uh, aftermarket. Not that the aftermarket shells are that great, but okay. And so once you've got the three Phillips screws out, I find it's easiest to open the system. That gives you a little bit more slack on the ribbon cable. And you can flip it up here. And using your two thumbs, pull the bail out, not up. And the ribbon cable should just drop out. I'm gonna go ahead and take these off. I gotta clean these up at some point. I will do that later though. Put that up to the side. Next step. Now we can turn the light back on. Got my soldering iron. The cable's a little twisted, sorry. All right, and I like to use a knife, in this case, a box cutter. I'll stick that in one of, right underneath the, okay, let me start over here. This is the part we need to get into. This is the power switch. Uh, what you need to do is you need to desolder this metal shielding so you can get inside of the physical thing. I like to stick my uh, box cutter underneath the shield. I'm using a box cutter because it's metal and it's thin and it's strong. You can use whatever you want really that works for you. Some people just use a flathead screwdriver or something. Uh, but this works for me. So you gotta melt the solder and then you can kind of twist up one side. You're done with the knife. Put that away. Flip it around and do the other side. Okay. Now, some of these metal shielding bits are uh, are directional, as in they're not. You can't just flip it around. Both sides are different. This one is not, so it doesn't matter too much, but just pay attention to which way it goes on. Now, get into the meat of it. This is the power switch itself. It's just this little plastic slider here with, if you can see that, there's a little wiper. Let me mute that, sorry. that slides across the contacts here on the motherboard itself and you can see there's three contacts or maybe you can't uh, one of them in the middle is a lot wider than the other two but these are these should be gold plated copper and they should be nice and shiny you can see that they are in fact covered with a bunch of black stuff here which is just carbon buildup on the contacts and the easiest way I've found to clean these is if you take like a you know cheapo cotton swab here I like to cut the actual top off I found that makes it a lot easier and just use the cardboard inner tube I guess not really a tube uh, and then take some isopropyl alcohol here I'm using 91% because that's that's what they had. Higher percentage is better in pretty much every case, uh, especially right here. The more percent that is, uh, the more alcohol it is. So in my case, I have 91%, which means it's approximately 91% alcohol and then 9% water. Um, the water is fine, really. Uh, you just want higher percentage because that'll evaporate faster. You know, you'd, it'll get out of your machine here. So you don't have to wait days just for it to dry out before trying it out. And how does that look? That should be quite a bit better. And you can see all the... Well, you can't really see it. There we go. You can see all the crap that came off on the cotton swab there. I'm going to go ahead and cut that off again. And going to hit it one more time. And I apologize for that noise. It's always awful. But 
that looks pretty darn good in my opinion. Okay, so next we're going to hit up the switch itself. I'm going to set the motherboard aside. I'm going to take my alcohol here and I am going to saturate the actual cotton swab part of the cotton swab. Take my knife again just to hold it. You have to be careful. This, uh, this little metal wiper will come out of the plastic and it's really small. It's kind of a pain in the arse to get back in. So I just use my knife to hold it in while I'm hitting it with the cotton swab. And I don't know how well this is going to come out on camera, but it is a completely different color after I'm cleaning it. And yeah, this is an internal part. We don't really actually care about the color so much, but it was covered in uh, carbon buildup there. You see it? Oh, well, maybe you can't. I don't know. The screen I'm looking at is only 720p, but I'm recording in 1080. So maybe it'll be a little bit easier when it's actually uploaded. But anyway, once you've got that cleaned off, uh, another thing you want to do, because as I was rubbing those contacts with the cotton swab, I was kind of bending them down a little. You want to make sure that they're getting, they're making plenty good contact. So again, I'm going to hold it down. And you can really use anything like a screwdriver. But I'm going to use my tweezers because that's what I have in my hand. I'm going to bend this contact up a little bit towards the center. And then do the same thing on the other side with the other contact. Alright. And then, if you take a look at it, you can see it's much more prominent uh, U or V shape. Okay. That's good. Make sure all that alcohol is evaporated. Looks good to me. And we're going to go ahead and take this, put it back in there. I'm going to just use my fingers. I'm going to drop it in. It doesn't matter too much where it is, you know, if it's in the on or the off or somewhere in between. Just want to make sure that it's all the way in. Then we'll take our shielding here and I'm going to put it back on. Oh, wait, one more thing. With the shielding, too, there's another thing I like to do with the shielding. Uh, if you take a look at it, the bottom part that gets soldered to the motherboard, I like to bend these in a little bit towards the center just to make... Ooh, that was a little bit too much there. Just to make it a little bit easier to, to attach back on. There we go. I don't know how well you can see that. And then I like to take the middle of it kind of bend it into like a little bit more of an M shape there. Okay. Now, snap it back on. It's probably not going to stay on by itself, which is why it was soldered in the first place. So as far as reattaching it, I like to uh, hold it down with my thumbnail here. And of course I just trimmed my nails, so it's going to be a little bit difficult. Uh, but I like to hold it down with my thumbnail and then try and press it down with the soldering iron. And I just did that real quick because this thing gets really hot. Um, but once you've got the one side down, it'll it's not really going to go anywhere. But you still have to solder the other side as well. Just going to do the same thing here. And that's soldered down, but it's crooked. So let's see if I can do it with this. Hmm. There's a tip for you. Use tweezers. That way you don't have to worry about it getting super hot. I'm just going to get the other side, make sure it's soldered down nice and solid. Now you should not need to add any solder to that. There should be plenty on there. Uh, in this case, there was absolutely plenty on there. Uh, try out the switch in this case. Uh, it's not wobbling around, which is a good thing, which is why we bent that shielding a little bit. Uh, it is kind of tight, but I don't think that that's going to make a huge difference, especially once all the casing and everything is reassembled. So let's try it out here. 
drop your buttons back in. Make sure everything is actually where it's supposed to go, otherwise you'll have to take it apart again. Like that button was upside down. And it's still open. I'm going to hold the ribbon, pinch it between two fingers like that. I just pulled it out as much as I can until I started feeling some resistance there. And then, it's kind of hard to explain this, but I'm going to slide it in. This is what's called a ZIF cable, or zero insertion force. And with the bail open, it literally does just slide right in. And I'm sorry, my hand's in the way. But I'm just closing the bail one side at a time, going back and forth to make sure it's fully closed. And once the bail is closed, the ribbon cable's not going anywhere. I can flip that back down. And then from here, you'd want to make sure you put in your three Phillips screws. I'm not going to do that in this case because I know I'm taking this thing apart again. Uh, mostly because I, I want to just spend a little bit more time cleaning it up. Uh, one thing I'm noticing though is this B button here is crooked, which is not going to work. So I'm going to flip that back up. And fix that. There we go. Actually, you know what? I am going to put these screws in. I lied. I'll just do one of them right in the middle. There. Now it's not going anywhere. Okay. So once you've got your three screws in, go ahead and drop your power switch on the floor. Okay. Pick it up and we're going to drop it in. Uh, which way does this go? The part with the uh, which I'm going to call it detent, goes up. And it doesn't really matter which way, if you know if it's in the on or the off position, uh, as long as it's in either the on or the off position, not halfway in between. And, you know, make sure it's lined up, otherwise you can break that off. And then once you've got that in there, you can drop your bottom cover back on. You have to fiddle with it a little. I like the OEM Game Boys because they always go back together so much nicer. I'm going to put two screws in, the two little ones in the battery compartment and the cartridge slot. Or no, I'm just going to do the one in the battery compartment because the cartridge slot I can hold together with a cart. And I'm going to put in this other battery here uh, because the original one is a little bit... Uh, bloated and it's not quite safe to use but anyway we flip this open turn it on what do you get first try oh nope I did something wrong well that's a bummer I guess I'm not showing you guys this video what do you want to bet it's the cart try this Pokemon Red. Nope, not the cart. Maybe that battery's dead. I didn't actually test it. Oh yeah, that battery was dead. I'm sorry. So, oh, we got volume and everything. Look at that. It turns right on. Ta-da! You know, there's no, I can hit it, I can tap it. It's not gonna reset, the power light's not flickering. Beautiful. So, sorry, not as prepared as I thought I was. I thought this battery was charged. Must be mistaken on that one. That is what you need to do to fix your SP if you're having that problem. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and finish well, I'm going to take this apart again, clean it up, and I'll put it back together off camera and everything. And uh, in the meantime, keep on being awesome. Thanks.